we know, because this is a fast fact for us, that x equals 7. But how did we get there? How did you know that x equals 7? Well, you worked backward, and you used something called inverse operations. In other words, you noticed that I need to use the opposite operation than the one that's being shown here. Right now, I'm being told to add 10. And 10 plus a number is going to give me 17. Well, if I work backwards, if I do the reverse of that, if I take 10 away from the number that I have, that I can take it away from, whatever I'm going to be left with must be 10. Let's try that right now, okay? And the way you do that is you do it by creating zero pairs. If you think to integers, positives and negatives, when you have a positive number and a negative number, you put them together, you have zero, okay? So here we have x plus 10. We want to get rid of this 10. We can't just take it out. We can't just go yoink. We have to mathematically get rid of it. Mathematically, the way you get rid of numbers is by creating zero pairs. So we're going to create zero pairs. Now we've got negative 10 and a positive 10. Together, they create a zero. Because we added a negative 10 over here, we have to put a negative 10 on this side. Remember, this sign says that whatever's on this side has to equal this side. We don't have 10 here anymore. We have zero, which means we have to take 10 out of here now. We've done it. All right, let's see what we have. 17 take away 10, that's gonna give us seven. 10 take away 10, that gives us x. x is all that's left on this side, seven is all that's left on this side. That means this is still balanced. This still has, this. it's equal, it's equal to. x is equivalent to seven, which means that in this side of the equation, 7 is what would go in x's place. Now we know what that variable is. It's no longer unknown. Okay? That's how you maintain balance when solving equations. This one wasn't too hard, though, because there weren't a lot of operations. What if I ramped things up a little bit for you? What if I gave you an equation like 2 times a number plus 3 would equal 17? Again, 17 is the balanced number we're looking at here. It's just a different way of showing it. We want to isolate. We want to solve to find x. x is going to stay on this side of the equal sign. And for everything we get rid of over here, we have to get rid of it over here. That's, that's the key. That's the secret to success here. So let's try this. Uh, what's the easiest thing for us to get rid of? Well, the easiest operation for us to work with right off the top is this. This is loose three units. So let's try that right off the top. It's a positive 3. So to get rid of it, we have to bring in three negatives. So we're going to write that. 2x plus 3, subtract 3. What we did to one side, we have to do to the other. So now it's going to be 17, subtract 3. All right, 17 subtract 3 is going to give us 14 on this side. Positive 3 taking away negative, or adding negative 3, I should say, leaves us with 2x. So now we have 2x equals 14. 2x, 2, or I should say, a whole number with any variable right next to it means multiplication. So 2x means 2 times this number, whatever this number is. If this is multiplication, the inverse, the opposite operation of multiplication, is going to be division. So we need to divide. So we're going to go 2 divided by 2x equals 14 divided by 2. Because of bed mass, we would do this division before we would do this multiplication. So it ends up working out. We've cancelled this out, and we've taken it out over here too. What you do to one side, you do to the other. 2 divided by 2, that's going to leave us with 1x. 1 times x. We can just write x. 14 divided by 2. Okay, That is going to leave us with our 7. So far, so good. We, we found x. Again, x equals 7. 